Uh, let's get to uh, Ann Coulter is the uh, best-selling author, the be- uh, great columnist. And, uh, you know, her new latest book is Adios America. It's a big bestseller, 12 weeks, the New York Times uh, bestseller list. And there's going to be a live book signing coming up Monday night at 8 o'clock. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you, Mark Simone? Very good. Explain to me what a live book signing is. Well, I've never done one before, but the same people who did Donald Trump's are doing mine, premier book collectibles. Um, yeah. I sit there being interviewed by Joyce Kaufman in front of my Christmas tree. You yeah, don't have a Christmas tree, do you? Well, I will after a boy comes and helps me put one up this weekend. <laughs> I, mean, I was just discussing with Lauren, your producer. Oh, are you like? Are you actually in your house, or is this like some <laughs> set somewhere with a fake Christmas tree? I might be. Um, and then people can email, and she interviews me, and people email in questions, and I answer them. You can go online and see the one Trump did. And as I sign books, perhaps for you, as you order them for all your friends and relatives, so, um, you can ask me questions and listen to me chit-chat with Joyce. Okay, this is Monday night at 8 o'clock, and you go to livesigning.com. Now, well, what do you mean you sign it? Oh, oh you mean like they can order I'm it? Sitting, and then yeah, it comes they in. order it. I'm, I'm signing, and then Premier Books takes care of sending it to you. Oh, okay, so it's livesigning.com, Monday night at 8 o'clock. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm going to make my specialty eggnog. You don't make any eggnog. <laughs> I do. I'm an excellent cook. You are? But it mostly concentrates on cocktails. <laughs> you can't cook. I can't even picture this. You don't even have a kitchen. I totally cook. Oh, you do not know me at all, Mark. So, and that's because we get together in New York City, and um, a city fairly bristling with restaurants. I don't, and, and also, you know, a kitchen's the size of the telephone booth. Oh, so uh, like, uh, can you, well, you ought to do a cookbook then. I know that. I'm thinking of it. No, uh, it was a bad idea. Forget about it. <laughs> all right, now listen. This Hillary Clinton, this Hillary Clinton can corrupt anything. Apparently, she's corrupted the DNC. They're totally in the tank for her. They have arranged for almost no debates, and whenever there is a debate, they hide it on Saturday night. There's one tomorrow night. You see all the advertising everywhere for it, right? (laughs) Right. No, I know. Someone mentioned it to me yesterday, I think. I had no idea it was coming, whereas we were preparing for the Republican debate, not because of the Republicans, but because Donald Trump was going to be there. I mean, for months, for months, it was on our – it was like Christmas – and it was like Christmas during the actual debate, which um, no one would have watched except for the few minutes the blessed Donald Trump was allowed to speak. Um, incidentally, can we get back to what you were playing at the beginning, um, that speech that Obama was giving about how hard it is to vet these guys, and, you know, we, can't, we can look at social media, we can't look at their private emails. Um, first of all, I loved your making fun of his um, I'd never noticed that before. Oh, yeah. No, what that was, that was not a speech. It was When it's a speech, he speaks like this and everything flows and there's no p- space between the words. When it's a live press conference, it's, uh, we, uh, 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 that's because there's no teleprompter. Well, point one, I love you pointing that out, and I was laughing through you're doing it, mostly because I know I have a lot of pause words, so I'm so happy to know that the um, famed most mellifluous speaker in the universe also uses pause words. But point two, this argument which we hear all the time um, about, oh, it's just so horrible when we have so many of these refugees coming and we don't have, you know, the personnel to deal with it and we can only look at so many things and, and databases don't exist. Um, don't take so many people then. <laughs> this is what we've been asking you. Please stop dumping the third world on our country. And their argument is, oh, yeah, well, we can't stop all the terrorists. There's so many of these guys to go through. Stop. Please stop. But thus, the rise of Donald Trump, whose, whose position is stop, please stop. Yeah. yeah we've done, you know, in 1979, Jimmy Carter stopped all Iranian uh, immigration. Because that- you know, from 1924 to 1965, the United States of America virtually stopped all immigration. Most prosperous period in American history. That's when we, you know, developed into a country with this massive, wealthy middle class. We need to take care of the people who are already here and stop dumping more and more low-wage workers. Not low-wage workers. All those Disney workers were replaced. Um, engineers are being replaced. Um, the entire American workforce is either being replaced or outsourced in order to, to fund, you know, globalist plutocrats. And this is now what the Republican Party has decided to stand for. It, it has never been so clear except with the rise of Donald Trump.
Yeah, no, it's uh, – although we need some illegal immigration. You know, you, you, <laughs> we need some busboys. I mean, Don't worry. We have plenty of low-wage workers who are already citizens. Okay, okay. That's good. Um, You're going to get your nails done. You'll get your <laughs> manicure. You'll have your busboys and your lawn boys, your gardeners, speaking to a plutocrat here. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, you know, there was an interesting article today. Uh, Jeb Bush – has got all these consultants, trainers, media trainers, coaches, uh, and they tell him, go after Donald Trump. Go after him in the debate. Every time he does it, he gets wiped out. <laughs> Rubio and Cruz are apparently pretty smart. They see this doesn't work. We'll be the only two that don't go after him in the debate. They keep rising. Every time, every de- nine debates, he goes, Jeb Bush goes after him, gets knocked out, drops in the polls. Even this week, he tries it again. <laughs> yes, and it gave Trump one of his best lines. Oh, you're a tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> but when will it dawn on him, huh, this doesn't work? No, it is funny. Most people learn after putting their hand on a fire the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that again. That hurt. Um, and I've noticed after m- most of these recent d- debates, at least after the first couple, um, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, it was weird. I expected everybody to go after Trump. Well, no, they've put their hand on the fire. They see what happens. He punches back so hard, nobody's going to try it again, except who alone <laughs> keeps, keeps making these impotent little efforts to attack <laughs> Donald Trump. Jeb, oh, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned him, because I tried tweeting this out last night, but it's hard to do in written form. Um, so Jeb was being interviewed on, on CNN last night, and, and the interviewer was pressing him on um, trying to get him to admit, well, Trump would be better than Hillary, though, wouldn't he? Um, or, or if it's Trump, you're, you're admitting Trump would be better than Hillary. And, and Jeb responded, well, absolutely, I'd be better than Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, even you. <laughs> Oh, come on, Zippy the Chimp would be better than Hillary. Even I would be better. I, Jeb, exclamation point, would be better than Hillary. (laughs) You know, uh, and when he said, Jeb Bush said to Trump in the debate, you can't win by insulting your way to the president. But he's got a uh, 33-point lead over Jeb Bush. (laughs) I know. I know. It's it's like all these mass immigration supporters, they are so smug and self-righteous, like Paul Ryan with his trillion-dollar budget funding sanctuary cities and everything else, um, which, by the way, I think this omnibus budget um, should be looked at as, as um, you know, an in-kind contribution to the Trump campaign. <laughs> Even the Republicans betraying us, betraying us, betraying <laughs> us, and you wonder why Trump is rising like a phoenix. Um, but these, these, these self-righteous claims about how you can't win, you can't win, they're so smug, and these are people who can't win anything. Um, yeah, Trump Trump is soaring, and he's soaring for a reason. You know, when uh, when they say Jeb Bush or Carly Funer, they're 3%, the margin of error is like 4%, so they're actually at zero. They're within <laughs> the margin of error. They're... No, what I'm waiting for is, um, because as you'll recall, they've gone through a whole series of arguments about how Donald Trump... Oh, he can't be the nominee. He won't be the nominee. It will be that little 14-year-old Ricky Ricardo. Um, um, but, and at one point, the argument was, well, okay, okay. Um, yeah, he has a solid 20%, but, but that's his ceiling. He's not getting more than 20%. They're just very passionate 20%. So now I'm waiting for the argument to be, well, his problem is Trump's ceiling. It's 55% of the electorate. <laughs> it's uh, a ceiling, though. So yeah. Watch out. But... Uh, hey, Hey, you know, speaking of Hillary Clinton, I've, so many people, especially Democrats, who say, "Well, she's not going to get indicted. Don't, well, she, if, if she won't get indicted. She won't get." A, a, a guy just emailed me, brought up a good point. Name another candidate who's currently under an FBI investigation. I mean, just the fact you're right. even being investigated by the FBI should disqualify you. Right. Though I do agree with people, and I know a lot of people on our side keep saying, "No, no, they're going to have to indict her," and I would. I would have you all reflect back, because they say, come on, you can't go after Petraeus and not Hillary. Yes, yes, that's applying logic and, and equal treatment, um, the justice is blind, so on and so forth. Um, I would remind you that even after the President of the United States molested an intern in the Oval Office and then openly, aggressively perjured himself under a law that liberals consider the most sacred, um, you know, since the Emancipation Pro- Proclamation, the Civil Rights Act, um, perjured himself over and over and over again to the point that not one of the Supreme Court justices showed up at his next 
State of the Union address, including the Supreme Court justice appointed by him, not one Democrat in the United States Senate voted to remove Bill Clinton um, Hmm. after his impeachment. Not one. No, Democrats will not go against one another. I say drop, drop, drop the wishful thinking. Don't drop the investigation. Well, the next Democratic debate, they're hiding it. It's tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Martin O'Malley, if you're listening, uh, or somebody out there must know Martin O'Malley, would you please tell him during the debate at some point to look at her and say, you're currently under investigation by the FBI. Why are you even running? You'll be uh, viral. You'll be all over the Internet with that clip. He would be, but d- Democrats really, I mean, they have the, the vast majority of the media on their side. They have decided it's going to be... Saint Hillary, um, and it really you, you you don't get rewards. I wrote about this in my second to last book. You don't get rewards going against the what whom the Democrats have decided is the strongest candidate. You won't end up with a show, your own show on MSNBC or a radio show or or a fabulous book deal. No, you'll be you'll be squished and attacked. Um, you know where's where's Howard Dean's show on MSNBC? Whereas there are lots of rewards awaiting those who attack the Republicans. No, that's true. And by the way, everyone's saying, people don't remember this, um, all of these snippy, (laughs) the other 13 running against Donald Trump, who've really got to, you know, face reality and drop out. It's going to be Trump. Um, They're all, you know, being snippy about Trump, but no one else. You probably remember this. I bet you most listeners don't. Um... All the guys who, who ran against Romney attacked him. He didn't get an endorsement from um, Rick Perry, Herman Cain, Newt Gingrich, um, Mike Huckabee. They were all attacking, attacking, attacking the front runner. Um, there's, there are a lot of rewards for helping a Democrat get elected. There are no rewards for helping a Republican get elected. Yeah, you know, when it gets to the general election, Trump has a much easier time than he's got now. Right, right now he's debating... Four or five really smart people on that stage. But really boring. Yeah, but smart. And then uh, general election, he's up against Hillary, who's not a good debater to begin with. Number two, she's been living in a bubble for the last year with no real time. Number three, I think she's dumb. Yeah. That was my – I know Republicans hesitate to say that because that's always the first argument liberals – well, after – after using a series of curse words like Linda Blair and the Exorcist, um, <laughs> um, the first thing they always say is to accuse their opponents of being dumb. But it was after this last thing with the Internet server that the light bulb finally went on over my head. She's dumb. Yeah, because, I, I mean, it's not like she's Betty I, Boop from from Mississippi who's never been in public life before. I hate was, to say it. We're, we're running out of time. Sorry. Uh, but everybody go uh, watch Ann Coulter Monday night, 8 o'clock. She's doing a book signing online. You go to livesigning.com, livesigning.com, Monday night, 8 o'clock. And go to annculter.com. You can get her book, Adios America, there. You can get her column. And Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Great to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. Take care.